Is it when you've gone through that kind of depression and that anxiety sort of thing? Is that is that something you learned about how you, the messages you give yourself? Yeah, I guess like my biggest takeaway from stuff that I've learned about and gaining my education around mental health is that everyone's brand of depression or anxiety is very different. I grew up with you know the movie version of depression, which is the can't get out of bed after a breakup kind of version we see in the movies and I'm a very high functioning depressive that's not me giving myself a pat on the back that's me saying like my version of depression is almost like a mania of like fill every minute of every day so you're not alone with your own thoughts distract 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 yeah yeah which means I'm very productive um but yeah my my brand of depression comes out as negative self-talk so it's basically anything that I do is not good enough more could have been done um and yeah, just not really cutting myself any slack, which is, it has been a good source of motivation to me, but it, it does mean that <clears throat> I don't offer myself that silence and that relaxed mind state of you did your best and that's enough. Mm-hmm. There's always, even at my very best, I, I, I feel like there must have been some area I could have done more. So it's just not, yeah. So, so what do you do now? to you know to give yourself the right messages that don't take you down that path anymore you you must have an active sort of change in life to now that you've been through that like i've had mm-hmm. i've had issues with addiction and stuff in my life and one of the things that right. i've always think about the drugs is and alcohol or just um bit all, of everything. all sorts of stuff uh, for my whole life sure. i've treated food like an alcoholic treats alcohol um that sort of mm-hmm. thing um and i remember someone telling me of their experience through you know, various step programs that the addiction's always in the car park doing press ups. And that mm-hmm. stuck. Yeah. You're closer to your next drink than you were to your last kind of thing. Yeah. So no matter what how good you feel about yourself, not as a way to kind of say life is crap, but you know, it doesn't take much for that addiction or that whatever your thing is. Yeah. Because it, it possibly is in the car park doing press ups means it, it could be getting stronger. It could be, you know, getting better. It could be and 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 that's been a message that I've received that I really um, that comes to me a lot actually about how and and I'm not I'm not saying that I'm on necessarily on top of my own issues we all have issues at times but yeah, yeah that's something that I that I think about a lot about doing press ups and press ups in the car park getting stronger that's which a is a really great way of putting it and yeah and I'm obviously thank you for for sharing that I think that that will resonate with a lot of people it definitely resonates with me in the sense that. I kind of, when I got diagnosed, went into fix it mode. I thought that, that my depression was something I could fix. And I didn't realize that it's like, oh no, it's it's something that I'm prone to. That doesn't mean that I, I could go years or whatever without having a depressive spell, but it's something that chemically I am prone to. And there are definitely things that I can be actively doing to not give myself the environment to make that um, pop up or at least uh, catch it before it gets too um, consuming. So for me, um, sleep has been a big thing for me. So if um, I run on adrenaline, I have anxiety. So if I'm working all the time, I'm great. And as soon as I stop working, I'm still creating that adrenaline and then I can't sleep. And sleep is really important. A lack of sleep will is a real it's like a gateway drug to me to all the other things surfacing because i'm at a point of exhaustion that means that i'm too exhausted to take care of myself in some really basic human things like feeding myself Mm. right i'm too exhausted to go for a walk or to go outside so i start creating an environment where my depression like a little virus or leech is like oh we're gonna grow and get bigger now you've created the perfect little petri dish for us to thrive and in the last like two weeks I've been having a lot of sleep issues um, just lying awake at night and that's a real breeding ground for me. So I've had like some physical ailments that have come up in this last week from a lack of sleep. I've definitely felt more bitey. I've noticed these spiraling thoughts coming back and it's it's less about a triggering event. It's more about the lack of sleep has created this environment for me to kind of take a few steps back in my progress and growing and education has been really helpful to me to like flag it Mm -hmm. and also understand that my brain 
in its wonderful ways is really capable of telling me lies and providing evidence to support those lies. And so that's a really scary thing to know that, you know, if I was to say or have a thought that, Pat, you don't like me or you're only bringing this on me on to like shaft me or something, then I would be able to bring, bring up a bunch of evidence of like other radio interviews where that's, or, and it's, none of it is true or happening but my brain is so overactive it can pull all these other and then create a really shitty time for myself and yeah yeah learning that those thoughts aren't facts and to try and intervene and police them before they become these great what turns into a day could turn into a week of me going like oh, no one likes me everyone's just you know or whatever that thought is that then as soon as i give it any attention goes massive um, do you yeah. know? Do you know about Occam's razor? Occam's razor is I a theory. Not. Occam's razor is okay. a theory that basically I'm I'm, I'm going to butcher it, but it basically says the most obvious, um, the, the most likely outcome is more often than not the correct outcome. Apparently, they use it in things like murder trials. But basically, they they say the most likely person to have committed this crime more often than not is the person that's committed the crime. Right? Not always, mm. but more often than not. And I often think mm. that the, the, the telling yourself stories, I have conversations with people all the time, including myself, and I stop and I go, okay, what's the most likely outcome here? What's the most likely outcome, you know, uh, for Kim? Is it that I, I want to have her on because I don't like her? Well, no. no. You know, what's the most no. likely, there's reasons for it because she's an interesting and, you know, uh, inspiring person to have a conversation with with so much, so many facets to her life that I just want to get to know this person over 60 minutes. And, you know, actually there's a comment on, on Facebook right now, why aren't more people watching this? It's dope. And because other people oh, want to hear it as well. 